Hello. So, this evening we are going to go for a flight in the DC-3. We have it ready on the runway at Booker Airfield or Wickham Air Park. And we're going to go for a flight primarily to look at the autopilot and for basic radio navigation in the DC-3. So let's go and jump inside the aeroplane. We'll start off by just taking off. So taking the parking brakes off and then pushing the throttle levers forwards gently. So we're going to sit back in the seat slightly, look down so we can see some instruments. We're going to let the weight of the tail lift us into the air. We've got no flaps on. But the weight of the tail should lift the nose automatically. And there it goes. So with the tiniest touch on the elevator, it lifted us up. So I'm actually having to give it a little tiny bit of forward stick to counter that. So put the gear up. So because it's a tail dragger, and because it sits at an alpha angle anyway, without adjusting anything, you can get it to climb pretty much straight off the runway without doing anything. So we're just waiting for the aircraft to accelerate a bit before we start manoeuvring. And rather than actually start manoeuvring what we're going to do is just trim the aeroplane out. So I'm giving it some elevator trim. I'm using a the hat switch on my joystick it is mapped to do elevator and aileron trim so I can just trim it out as we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the Sperry Autopilot over here. So, how do we switch it on? Gyro Pilot Power is the big knob at the bottom. So we click on it, and this lights up. And we can immediately say, go for heading hold. But before we do so, let's spin this round to be going the same direction we are going. Yeah? So we'll line it up, and then we push that in. So the aeroplane is now going to chase the direction on the top half of this display. And if we turn this by rotating it, we can move the top line and the aeroplane will follow where we want to go. In terms of altitude, we can roll the gyro pilot pitch, which will influence the aircraft pitch. So if we roll it clockwise, the pitch will go downwards. So if I roll it clockwise gently, you can see the vertical speed is dropping. If I roll it counterclockwise, then the vertical speed increases. Yeah? So I can just roll it clockwise, and you just have to keep an eye on it, basically. So we'll, we'll leave it climbing for the moment, because we get a sensible amount of height to, to fly around. I'm going to pull the throttles back a bit. Now we finish climbing, I'm going to move the mixture back to auto lean just while we're flying around. I'm also going to... Oh, that's interesting. We took off without the cow flaps. So we're going to leave them in trail. So the, the auto start on the runway situation from flight sim was a little bit wrong. That's why I like starting from cold and dark normally. Anyway, we're flying along, we're following a heading. If we wanted to turn north, all we have to do is spin this around. So we'll spin it towards 360, or zero as it will appear on here. Notice this is backwards to a modern gyro compass. So we just spin it around. You've got an attitude indicator here, so you don't have to worry too much about looking outside. So you can see straight away you can fly along on an autopilot issuing direction instructions and you can monitor your speed and on paper you could do ready reckoning on a map. Yeah, you'd have to figure for the wind as well, but the maths for that is pretty straightforward. You know, just working out resolving forces really and vectors. Okay, if we get rid of the yoke out of the way by clicking the red label behind it, you've actually got some navigation radios as well. So we're flying north now up the country. We've got the nav radio CDI here, course deviation indicator. Or oh, sorry, yeah, CDI. It's, it calls it a CDI in here. And you've also got the um, HSI in here as well. So you've got the, the needles that you would see in a modern system. Notice they are two separate systems, which makes it a bit of a 
mind melt trying to figure it all out. So okay, let's go and have a look at the map and look up some radio beacons. So we came away from Booker and we flew at an angle and then we turned north. We'll go and tune in the Bovingdon VOR 113.75. Okay, and this is one that's better than that to tune in. No, we'll go for Bovingdon. 11375. So we look overhead and we tune a nav 1, which is there's COM 1, COM 2, nav 1, nav 2. So we'll tune nav 1 to 113.75. So that's the standby frequency. To make that the active frequency, we click the end of this knob and it switches it over. So if we look down now, the white arrow is pointing towards that VOR station relative to us travelling straight up the dial. So if we wanted to turn directly towards the VOR, we would need to turn right by about 60 degrees, yeah, which we can do. So we're travelling at zero, we'll turn right, and again it's left on here because this is backwards. Turn right to 60. If you look on the map, we'll see that happening. We are turning right. We can actually figure it out by, you know, to double check to our calculations. Yeah, it's about 65 degrees. But that's the thing about these old aircraft. Nothing is exact. It's all about judgment calls. And you can see now we are flying straight towards the VOR. Forget about the compass rose. That's got nothing to do with it. Yeah, you can tune that around. That's your omni bearing selector in a modern system which has got nothing to do with what this needle is showing. This is showing purely in terms of straight up on this instrument, the offset to the VOR. So you can see it's slightly off to the right. So you have to imagine, it's a shame there isn't a marker at the top of the instrument to help us with this. So where does this come in then using the compass rows? If you look over here, you've got a traditional radio navigation kit, which you can use in concert with this. So say we're, we're flying along this 65 degree line into Bovingdon. Say we didn't want to fly in on that line. Say we wanted to fly in on this radial here that's like 75 degrees or thereabouts. So what we can do is tune this, turn this around. So 75 is at the top. So that would be 60 at the top. That would be 70 at the top. And that would be 75 at the top. So you can see the needle moved. We are off to the right of the 75 degree line. Which is absolutely right, look. We're off to the right of the 75 degree line. So we can then use our autopilot to turn further north. So turn to 50 degrees, maybe. So the aeroplane is turning towards 50 degrees. We'll, we'll make it more pronounced so this happens quite quickly. 40 degrees. So you can see relative to us going straight up, we are swinging left, the VOR is off to one side, but watch the needle. The needle will start to swing in as we're about to cross over the 75 degree radial. It's very much more about judgment calls in these older aircraft, it's less so about exact numbers. Here comes the needle starting to move or I thought it was yeah it's moving so we need to get ready to change our course back to 75 degrees so by using these simple techniques you can fly into and out of VORs on the radials so we're going to go back to 75 now so the gyro compass is turning us back to the direction we've asked for. We're almost on the centre line, close enough. And let's have a look. Yeah, and we're pretty much doing what we said. But like I said, it's all about judgment. And the aeroplane overcorrected look, and now it's correcting back. Just to make this more fun, in an older aircraft, whenever you do a big change of direction, these gyro-driven compasses will drift. Yeah, so you need to check them against the binnacle compass as, as well. Yeah. 
just to make it a bit more fun. Anyway, so we're flying along. Let's go and decide what we're going to do next. Let's go back towards Booker, shall we? So, to go towards Booker from where we are, we could just use the autopilot. So we'll set a course a little way ahead of where we are to find out the direction to go back. We want to be going 222 degrees. So, we'll turn to 222 degrees. Which is about there. We also want to lose some height because we've been slowly climbing. We're at 4,000 feet now. So, on the way back, we'll cut the engines back. And we'll use the gyro pilot pitch control. Remember, we go clockwise to push the nose down. And we're dropping at 1,500 feet, maybe 1,700 feet a minute at the moment. Because we're in a bank, it's more pronounced. When the plane stops banking, that will come back up. Yeah, so it's coming back up. And it's almost come back up to zero, look. And it's going to because of the airspeed, I imagine. And then it's dropping back down again. So we have to keep be mindful of continuing to monitor things. So we will descend a little bit harder than that. So come down at 1,000 feet a minute. We're back down to 3,000 feet. And we're flying back towards Booker. Just by following ready reckoning on a map. So you, in the real aircraft, these old aircraft, you would use a combination. So you can see the, the airfield out in front of us now. So I'm going to come off the autopilot now. So I just pulled the throttles back too far then. That was all that was complaining about. So all we have to do is turn this back off and we have control. So I'm just going to do some turns just to lose some speed. Obviously we can put the undercarriage down and that acts as an enormous air brake. But we won't do it just yet. It's time to admire some scenery for a while, isn't it? Obviously the engines are idling so they're not exactly um, running smoothly. Okay, so let's get that gear down and see the animation. And we'll go for some flaps. Once you've got the gear down, you can pull the throttles back further and you won't get the warning. We're a bit high. Getting okay, near to stall, look, so 80 knots is our limit. We need to be mindful of that. So rather than try to fight this to get it down quickly, we could side slip in to lose height drastically and quickly, but we're just going to fly a quick circle. Keep it just above 80 knots. Continuing to lose height, just watching that vertical speed. It's stuttering a little bit, isn't it?
we're in a much better position now. A lot of the noise we're hearing is because I've got the flaps down. It makes it a big old rickety, noisy aeroplane. You have to be mindful of the spool up time or the um, the, the, th the throttle response on these old engines is not great. So don't get yourself into a corner where you can't anticipate that you're getting into trouble to get back out of it. That is the penalty of trying to land without the um, tailwheel lock. It becomes incredibly difficult to stop it from doing ground loops. So I really should have ducked underneath the centre pedestal and turned on the um, the tailwheel lock. So there you go. The, the main aim for this evening was to have a quick look at the uh, the, the Sperry autopilot system and radio navigation. So it has got them, they're rather rudimentary and there's a lot more judgement involved than a modern system. But you certainly can use it for ready reckoning or dead reckoning as some people call it, where you're drawing lines on the map. So that maybe it's time to get the printer ready and print out your charts and to fly by drawing lines and cross-referencing the VOR stations to figure out where you are. Right, let's pull up the flaps while we're taxiing back. Yeah, it's gone very stuttery this evening, isn't it? Very strange. Normally it's much, much smoother than this. Seems to be some real strangeness going on with the simulator the last few nights. You forget how big the Dakota is until you go <laughs> roll past the Cessna with it. And your wing passes over the top of the Cessna. <laughs> I don't think this was really designed to be here, was it? We'll leave it in the middle of the aircraft parking and then apologise later. OK, so we can shut the engines down just by starving them. Obviously we can turn the magnetos off as well. And then go and turn everything else off. So I'm not sure because we loaded in automatically what's going to have happened with this so we need to close the um, cal flaps that's all off that's all good so yeah let's just turn the battery off and there we go so yeah hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully it was instructive about using the sperry autopilot and radio navigation and i'll see you again soon